There are a lot of keyboard mods out there, while some of them look really promising, others seem downright strange. So today, let's venture on a journey to test out these mods to see if they actually improve the sound and feel of the keyboard, or are they in DIY crafts territory? I've tested out hundreds of keyboards, but even I will learn something today. Let's begin by setting up our workstation. We've got five keyboards here and all the tools needed. Let's hope they all make it out in one piece. I really hope so. Number one, we'll be using the Q2 Pro for our first mod, one of my favorite keyboards, and we'll kick it off by starting with the space bar, the most important part of the keyboard in my own opinion. We're going to test different versions and compare them. For this one, all you need is a space bar, a $3 roll of painter's tape, and a few basic tools. I started by laying a piece of tape on the back of the space bar. I cut the shape of the space bar in, in the tape and then pressed the tape in around the stems. There's so many holes. This actually turned out to be a super headache because the spacebar has six stems. What spacebar does that? Come on. But eventually I was able to complete the mod. It's beautiful, huh? We'll compare the sound after this next mod. Next up, we're using the same spacebar, but instead we're filling up with hot glue. Yep, we're going back to second grade today. I've always wanted to do this. I always hesitate to do mods like this one because they're not reversible like the tape mod version. You can't just tear it out. I mean, you could, but it's pretty painful. So do it at your own risk. Let's see if it makes a difference at all. I got my hot glue gun stuff out and I'm ready to start gluing. I made sure not to get any on the stems, but I couldn't exactly fill in the corners. So I ended up with two big globs. So uh, yeah, this is the best we can do for now. I forgot how messy this whole process is. Blech. And after about five minutes of cooling, it was ready for the sound test. Okay, so a bit of an improvement here. Both mods gave it a deeper sound for sure. It removed the sharp clack of the spacebar. If I had to choose between glue or tape, I definitely prefer the glue in terms of sound, but in this case, it's not worth it. Because after this, I tried to remove the hot glue and it just did not come out. Proceed with caution. For the next mod, we're trying a mod I learned from Hippiotech. He calls it the press and seal mod. You basically wrap your PCB in press and seal. The stuff you find in your kitchen to wrap your leftover food. Hippio definitely knows his stuff, but I don't know about this one. I suppose wrapping tape around the PCB can alter the sound profile of a keyboard, or it might just break it. But let's find out together. Our sacrificial lamb for this mod will be the GMMK Compact. This is definitely not a mod for the faint of heart, you might ruin your keyboard. You need to fully disassemble your keyboard, strip everything down until the PCB is completely bare, naked. No keycaps, no case, no switches, no stabs, nothing. I forced Jake to help me on this so it doesn't take me like six hours. So if you see any hairy Sasquatch looking arms, that's him, not me. Boom, it's done. The PCB is naked and we've got the press and seal ready to go. So if uh, I'm doing this right, there's totally static electricity. I think you just pull some out and you roll it up. Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Now you cut it and you press the extra bits down. That's it. I feel like I felt some static electricity and that can't be good for your PCB, right? So let's hope it turns back on. I put the case back together and simply popped the switches straight into the plastic. This can't be good, right? I also came up with a better name. How about the mummy wrap mod? No? Okay, never mind. But does it make a difference in the sound? Let's just say I'm skeptical here. interesting very interesting so there is actually a slight improvement in sound without any change in the feel at all i would say it removes a bit of the sharper clack sound and it makes the keyboard like five percent poppier so hippio not bad you did good here but now for the moment of truth does the keyboard still work okay it's not starting up don't panic don't panic i'll try this on a different computer instead of the laptop and it works 
It's just a power issue with the laptop. This keyboard sucks a ton of energy, I guess, but the PC did it. Ooh, I thought we bricked the keyboard there for a second, but it's okay. Still works. I don't know if I recommend this mod though. There was still a lot of static electricity in here when I wrapped the PCB and that can't be healthy for the keyboard. It's super humid here where I live, so that could be a good thing. And maybe it's really dry where you're at, so do it at your own risk. Next up, we're going to try the gummy o-ring mod. I ordered a few of these massive o-rings online and I'm going to see if I can make a budget keyboard feel bouncier. The o-ring is meant to simulate the gasket mounted style of higher end keyboards that give them their bouncier and higher end feel. A cheaper keyboard like this one, the RK61 is tray mounted, so everything is screwed directly into each other and into the case, hence there's no bounce, there's no flex, there's nothing. It's just stiff. I first saw this mod from keyboard when he modded his Tofu 60 and I've been wanting to try it out ever since. So let's test it out for ourselves. For this, we've got to simply pop off a few keycaps and unscrew the case. Ignore the sand on the inside, that was from a different video. <laughs> you didn't see any of this. Now we just take the PCB and we wrap the rubber o-ring around it. As easy as that. I just pop it into the case. And it does take a bit of force, because there's a lot of friction here. After a bit of finagling, I finally got it back in. Now, we just let it stay here as a friction fit, so you don't even need the screws anymore. Just toss that in the trash bin. Although if I were doing this for my long-term keyboard, I would sand down the USB-C port just a little bit. Since the keyboard does sit higher in the case now, USB-C port needs a little bit more room there. And the keyboard has flex, so that's a good sign. Let's see if it sounds any better. Wow, that is a huge improvement in both sound and feel. I would highly recommend this one. It's super easy to do. It doesn't destroy your keyboard. You can take it out and it makes a big difference. Plus it was like 10 bucks. That's a good one. For the next mod, we're doing sand, but not the same sand as last time. No, no, that was cheap stuff. This is kinetic sand. It's different, trust me. I also learned this one from Hippiotech, so let's see if he's two for two today. This costs about 13 bucks for the whole bag, but you won't be needing the whole bag. You can just use it for the keyboard and then play with it, because it's really fun. Is it weird that I want to eat it? Oh, yeah. Don't eat it though, it's bad for you. I don't know about you, but I've always wanted to play with kinetic sand, so this video is really just an excuse for me. I mean, I already busted out the hot glue gun, so I might as well get in some sand too. Just love me some kindergarten play toys. For this, we'll be using the RK61 again. All we need to do is take off the o-ring from before, and then we can get started. After slicing it with a knife and considering a career change to kinetic sand ASMR, I'm finally ready to do the mod. The first thing I noticed about kinetic sand is it feels so much different than normal sand. It holds together like a solid, but it also feels liquid at the same time. Ooh, this is awesome. I don't understand the sorcery behind this thing. Maybe it has some good sound dampening qualities. Maybe, maybe not. Let's find out. I packed it into the case, making sure there was still enough room for the keyboard, and I think I'm doing it right. Of course I am. How could someone do this wrong? My inner six-year-old is very happy right now. Once it was all packed in, I put the PCB back into the case and then recorded the sound test. Before we jump into it though, let's dump out the kinetic sand and also try one more case mod to compare. This time though, we're going to use Play-Doh. Yep, we're going for the kindergartner trifecta today. I busted out my box of Play-Doh because I have that. It's cool. Play-Doh is cool, just so you know. But now I have to choose my favorite color. Hmm, I know. Black, like, like the, the color, color of my soul. soul. In retrospect, I have no idea why I went with black, but I started to pack it into the case only to realize there wasn't enough. So I reached for the red as well. The colors are partitioned and they won't touch each other. But then I ran out of red and it was time to enter Play-Doh hell. I pulled out the white play-doh and pushed it into the case, letting it touch the red. Please forgive me. But that wasn't enough either. I needed to finish off with another color. Yellow. Haha. <laughs> Now it's just wrong. Now that the unspeakable act has been committed, let's put the keyboard back together and do the sound test. So what do you think? Which one was the best? 
Personally, I feel like Kinetic Sand was a massive bust. There was zero change in the sound, zero change in the feel, so it was disappointing, but at least I got to play with the sand and now I have the sand. I don't recommend the mod though, it's a little expensive too. And for the Play-Doh, I wouldn't say it improved the sound, but it changed it. Instead of the normal typing sound, now it just sounds more muted. I don't think I prefer it, but if you want a quieter keyboard, I guess it works. Once the Play-Doh dries out though, I don't think it'll do anything anymore, but it's worth a shot if you want. You can try it, you can take it out, it's reversible. Now moving on to the next mod and this one is 100% original, created by me. The only thing is, I've never done it before. During one of my previous keyboard challenges, I picked up this block of cork at Michael's and ever since then I've been resisting the urge to put it inside of a keyboard. But luckily for me, today is the day. Let's get corkin! What's that even mean? We're going with the Keychron C1 for this experiment, so I might ruin keyboard number 4. I'll start by popping the case open. Then I removed the mods from a strange previous video where for some reason, I, or another person, put a t-shirt inside the keyboard. I think it works too. So I took that out. I laid the cork on top of it, outlined the shape, and cut it up. But I didn't have enough, so I need to cut out two pieces. After cutting them to shape, I laid them on top and pressed them really hard for the standoffs to punch through. It's pretty messy, but somebody's gotta do it, am I right? I had to cut out a few spaces for the feet and had a moment of panic when I realized the cork was too thick. Yep, too thick! It's time for keyboard surgery! So I'm just gonna cut out the bottom half and hopefully that will work. It's a jank mod, it's really messy, I don't know if I recommend it, but let's do a sound test and see how it turned out. After taking a few seconds to think about it, yeah, it actually does sound better. It's hard to explain, but it's exactly what I imagine cork would sound like. Maybe thockier, oakier, maybe an oaky afterbirth. It just sounds better and I'm here for it. Although it was a pain to do, so I don't know if I recommend it. It's super strange. Uh, do it if you want. <laughs> and for the last mod, this one's super simple. At this point, everyone knows a desk mat makes your keyboard sound better. Like a lot better. The extra cushion it provides removes the extra bit of rattle and improves acoustics immensely. But what if you're broke and you can't afford a desk mat? Well, you're in luck because you know what everyone does have? That's right, you in the front. A t-shirt. The question is, can this $3 t-shirt I bought at Michael's compared to the sound of a desk mat. For final keyboard today, number 5, I'll be using an unmodded Techware Phantom, one of the best stock keyboards I've ever heard, so let's find out. Well, the keyboard definitely sounds worse on the desk, which makes sense. I mean, it's just a piece of wood and there's nothing between the keyboard and the table to remove any unwanted echoes. So yeah, not a great choice. In my opinion, the best sound was on the desk mat, but if you can't afford that, a cheap shirt can improve the sound quality quite a bit, making it a legitimate option for some of you. And if you want a bonus, you cut the shape of the keyboard into the t-shirt so no one can even tell you're using a t-shirt. So what do you think? Do you agree with these mods and their verdicts? Any mods you want us to try next time? And uh, tell me what you think.